Hello builders, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Here's just a little time-lapse video I threw together for our Weissen and Tacken habitats. Just a little something that we did over on Twitch over a couple days. Now unfortunately we did lose a little bit of the footage. Not too much, just me clearing out the initial area and building the barn in the background. But thankfully we got most of the footage back, enough to make this video. Now as I said, this is going to be a two-for-one video where we got the Weiss and attack in there. And coming up in a few days, I will release some time lapses for our penguins, polar bears, and snow leopards as well. Unfortunately though, I did lose some of the footage for the other animals in this area. That would be the arctic wolves, the foxes, and the doll sheep. But hey, that's life. There's no point crying over corrupted video files. But hey, with that out of the way, let's just get on with the video. I won't do too much talking in this video, I'll just let you guys watch on your own pace. I'll leave my comment every now and then. For instance, right here, we're just doing a little keeper area, just so keepers can have access to the exhibit. And here, I'm just fiddling with it and trying to get it to fit into the side of the mountain. You'll find with my builds, I usually try to incorporate the structures into nature in some way, usually by covering with rocks or foliage. I want guests to feel like the zoo is part of nature and that they're actually walking through the habitats themselves rather than just viewing them from a sterile environment. Another thing I like to do to my habitats is just to add these small little viewing areas right in the middle to give guests a chance to get nice and close to the animals and also I usually put the uh, talking points here as well. If you're using grid pieces, an easy way to make buildings like this very quickly is to just build one wall segment, kind of like this. You know, play around with it, get all the pieces just how you want, and once you have it ready, you just copy and paste it around. And then you can do micro adjusting on the pieces that you've copied. Maybe some you want to just have a door, some maybe you just want a solid wall, maybe you want a window and some. Once it's all copied, making those adjustments after we're back can be really easy. Now normally I wouldn't use the in-game fences, I would prefer to make my own. But with this zoo, I've decided to make an exception and just use the in-game fences whenever I can. This is to save on the in-game pieces, as I'm probably going to be pushing a couple million by the time this project is done. As I do plan to have every animal housed in the zoo at one point. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with the in-game fences. I do make it work. I usually add in trees and rocks all around them just to help make them feel a little bit more part of nature rather than just a static chain link fence or a glass panel. You'll see here, I just start covering up a lot of these little posts with trees and rocks just to naturefy everything. Is that a word? Well, you know, it's not a word, I'm going to make it a word. We're going to naturefy the hell out of this. Usually on stream I give people lots of tips on what to do for their habitats, but the biggest tip I can offer to anyone, just practice your rock work. Put rocks around your habitat, within your habitat, all over, and then surround it by vegetation, and it brings the habitat to life.
And right about here, I decided, you know what, let's get this waterfall in. I decided to make this little cascading effect by using these pre-built pieces and then just surrounding them with rocks. I usually like adding little holes right here to make it look like the water is flowing out of the exhibit as much as it is flowing in from the waterfall. And right here, I just add a few stalls for the Wysink. Although when I add the Wysink to the exhibit later, I find that the stalls were a little too tight, so I had to go back and make them just a little bit bigger. And as it happens often on the stream, we get interrupted by my cat Noctis, who just needs to sit down in my lap while I work. And you'll notice that he just falls asleep in my arms. And this happens more often than you would expect. Now be honest in the comments below, are you looking more at the cat right now or the building? This is one of my favorite parts of doing the building, is the foliage. It just starts bringing the whole habitat together. It really makes it feel like it's coming alive. And as I had to adjust some of the stalls to put the Weissing in, I had to adjust a few of these rocks around. Just make it a little bit wider so that the Weissing can move around.
And then here we just decorate the final bits of the exterior of the habitat. And with that done, I'll move on over to the Tacken habitat. But before we move on, it wouldn't be Panzu without being infuriated by a little bit of pathing. But in the end, I managed to get to bed properly. And like the Weissant, the Tagen Habitat, I just start by building the barrier around it. And I saved you from seeing me rebuild the Keeper entrance, which was just a straight copy from the Weissant exhibit. And to keep the theme of these two together, I also copied the educating talking point area for the middle of the exhibit. Unlike the other area's fence, I go around just adding in rocks and vegetation, just to naturefy it all again. Whenever I get the chance, I usually like to add in water features, like rivers and such, that can move between habitats. This river flowing through the Tacken habitat will eventually flow into the polar bear habitat, just to make everything look a little bit more connected. You know what time it is? It's time for another Cascading Waterfall. I decided I like the look so much from the Weissen one, I decided to just repeat it over here in the Tacken Habitat. Right here I'm just doing a rough sculpt of the mountains. I don't do too much work on them in this video as I save doing the mountains for at the end of the area. Once I finished all the habitats in Polar Pass, then we came around and we did a little bit of cleanup to decorate the mountains.
Another feature I like to add into my habitats when I can is just making it multi-layered so it's not all too flat. It gives multiple perspectives for the guests to see the animals and lets the animals just move around on different planes. Now it's time that we add the Tekken to the habitat and it gives me a chance to click on them and see their pathing just to check that they can get into everything and that there's no escaping points. But with them safe and secure now, it comes time to the point where I just need to go crazy and decorate this with all manner of foliage and plants. Now where I normally put the feeding stations, I usually like to add a ton of foliage just to make it look like animals are coming here to graze. With a few finishing touches on all the foliage and rock work, the exhibits are finished. I'll say goodbye builders until next time, and I'll just leave you with this one little flyby of these two exhibits. Have a good one, and happy building!